Welcome to Don't Do Disney Without Us. My name is Daniel. And my name is Zach. And welcome back to our channel. Uh, this is our little show we like to do about all things Disney. That includes the parks, the uh, Disney Plus streaming service. Look, I'm wearing a Disney Plus shirt. Uh, the movies, uh, everything except the sports. So pretty much it. Who cares? Who cares? Who cares about the sports? Lots of people, just not us. <laughs> All right, episode 19 uh, today, and I think we have a topic that uh, might be of interest to you if you're traveling to Florida anytime this summer. Uh, we're going to talk about how to beat the heat at Disney in Florida. I have to wait for this, because otherwise it's going to throw me off. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Goodbye, music. Okay. Uh, yeah, and but before we get into the show, I wanted to say real quickly, we are participating in a live streaming event this coming Saturday, July 30th at 5 p.m. Eastern time over at pride48.com. This is our annual live streaming weekend where a whole bunch of LGBT uh Q and friendly podcasts uh, all stream all weekend long uh, as it starts Friday evening and it goes all the way through Sunday evening. So if you want to hear us with our incredibly special guest host, Jen LaForge, uh, it'll be at 5 p.m. Eastern time. Pride48.com is where you want to go to get all the information for that uh, event. Basically, uh, you can stream Pride48 either on, you know, your your device of choice your your google home or your amazon echo or any of those things just by saying hey device play pride48.com or play play stream pride 48 it is one of those two anyway it's not important just as a uh, just as a, a point yes daniel actually co-created did you co-create or did you solely create no i co-created it he co-created the pride 48 yeah. lgbt podcasting network yeah but that's right. That's not important. What is important is that we talk about <laughs> how to beat the heat at Florida. And Zach had a very personal encounter with this when we were at the Magic Kingdom last Saturday. Sunday? Saturday. Saturday. We went to Epcot on Friday, Kingdom on Saturday. I don't know how days of the week work. <laughs> uh, but yes, um, I am incredibly prone to overheating and motion sickness and both of those things came into play uh when we were at magic kingdom last saturday mm -hmm. um we had brunch uh, at the grand floridian cafe and then we took the monorail to the magic kingdom and we rode big thunder mountain yes after which i felt a little bit woozy and mm -hmm. wobbly mm -hmm. and Instead of listening to my body and saying, no, I'm not going to do anything else right now and going and, you know, getting a glass of water or something, we immediately trekked back all the way across the park to Fantasyland yes. to ride the Seven Dwarves Mind Drain. Correct. As you and do. that sealed the deal. I spent the next rest of the day feeling miserable, throwing my guts up sweating like a okay. pig and we don't, we don't, just yeah, feeling yeah. bad. Right. Heat exhaustion basically is the the textbook. It's it's unclear how much of it was motion sickness and how much of it was heat exhaustion. They both have similar symptoms. Uh, however, motion sickness typically once you sit still for a little while you can kind of get over and you were not getting any better no. on this. No, we we we, we stuff, sat so. outside Gaston's tavern for Good hour? Yeah, a good hour. And you were still... Uh, I thought that they were going to have to bring a stretcher to get you out of the park. <laughs> However, that led to this conversation of how do you deal with the Florida heat, especially in July, August, uh, the, the hottest part of the year here in Florida. Uh, we live in a very, very hot place. And uh, there are a lot of things that Floridians do to counter that. And sometimes when you're visiting our fine state, you may not know about these things. And so I wanted to kind of do a little episode about that. Uh, I have looked at so many different articles online of how to beat the heat in Florida and what to do to prepare for heat in Florida. And they all give advice 
but I've kind of picked out the items that rang true with me. As someone who lives here every day, who goes out walking in their neighborhood every single day, um, you know, I'm in the Florida heat every day. And I know these are the things that I do that definitely make a difference as opposed to some of the more gimmicky things that I've seen people talk about that I don't know if they make a difference or not because I don't use them. And I'm so uh, we, we'll, we'll talk about gadgets at the very end. So these are just things to help you beat the heat in Florida um, in general. And, and the first one that everyone mentions, I feel like they mention it too much, but uh, is water, drinking water. Staying hydrated. Stay hydrated. Drinking water. Hydrate, hydrate, hydrate. Don't drink so much you need to pee every 30 seconds, but you need water. But the way they make it sound, they, they, like you're going to carry around a gallon jug of water with you. Honestly, that is not necessary. Uh, just make sure that you're drinking water uh, during your day. Also, these things count as water. Juices, milk, uh, uh even uh, soda, well, you know, diet soda. Uh, The dehydrating form of soda tends to be the sugary ones as opposed to the diet ones, just in case you didn't know that. Um, Most drinks are mainly water. So uh, the the old wives' tale that caffeine will completely dehydrate you and it makes you thirstier to drink caffeine than it doesn't isn't quite that true. Caffeine does have a slight dehydrating uh, factor, but not... Not if you're drinking a drinking a whole soda is still going to quench your thirst. So I guess is what I'm trying to say. Right. So don't don't freak out about the water, but definitely make sure that you are drinking and you're staying well hydrated. And if you yeah. don't normally carry a water bottle with you to the parks, yeah, which most people don't. I'm gonna say something that's gonna make AJ at the Disney Food Blog very mad. Yes. Buy a bottle of water. Uh-huh. preferably from a merchandise shop if you have any form of eligible discount, Yeah, and just refill it. You could do that. You can also get cups of water from almost every single quick service location. Any counter service restaurant at Disney, any counter service place, uh, you can walk up to them and go, I would like a cup of water, please. They will give you a very small cup of ice, you know, water and ice, but it is totally free, and it's it's... They, they they smile. They don't give you an attitude or anything. They, they hand you the cup right. of water. There is. Uh, yeah. There, there, there's no reason not to hydrate. Yeah. So the other thing. Do I, so. <laughs> when we were at Epcot this past weekend, uh, something that I, I noticed, I noted in my brain because I wanted to bring it up to you guys on this particular topic here. When, when you live in Florida and you turn on the faucet to uh, – get cold water out of it, you tend to let it run for a little while because the pipes in your house are also in the sun Mm -hmm. or or in the heat. They're not inside the air conditioned part of the house. And so the water that runs through the pipes is warm in the summer. The same thing happens with the water fountains at Epcot and the Magic Kingdom. So if you walk up to a water fountain that hasn't been used in the next, in in the last like minute or two, you're going to want to push the button and let the water run for a little while because it will be warm water that comes out of that. And let's face it, warm water is kind of disgusting. Yeah. So let it run for a little bit and it will get cold. And then you go, oh, look, cold water. Uh, Also, if you're filling up your water bottle, let let it run for a little bit just to make sure that it's cold before you do it. Uh, Anyway, there you go. That's number one thing that all of them say is to drink water it rings true i have never had a problem staying hydrated so i i don't think that much about it but okay water but the number two item is something that i absolutely notice and to me makes the biggest difference out of anything and that is shade Uh, standing outside in florida in the shade in the summer can be downright pleasant a uh, nice cool breeze, you know, uh, a little bit of humidity in the air, the birds singing. It's like, it's lovely to sit outside in the shade. Uh, we have, uh, you know, a backyard and we're, we're looking into putting in a gazebo there so that we have shade that we can sit under and still be outside. And just the yeah. difference when we were walking through Epcot last night mm-hmm. from the parking lot, parking lot to the, the, the hallway in between creations and connections on the way to guardians. Mm-hmm. Just the the temperature difference in there. It's still hot, but it's not there. I mean, there's a breeze. Yeah. There's a breeze and it's cooler and you're not dying. Yeah. The shade makes a huge difference. So search out shade. You're you're not going to have much luck at Epcot if you're in the World Showcase. But there is some shade to be found at Epcot around Future World in certain locations. 
Um, there's some shade to be found near the back entrance of Epcot, that that bridge that goes over. There's some shade-ish in those areas. Basically, Imagine, oh, go ahead. No, go ahead. No, seek out your indoor your indoor queues, r- dark rides. Uh, go see a show inside at one of the theaters. Go see the new Coco scene in Donald's Philhar Magic. Well, I, I, <laughs> I, I'm going to put those down here oh. because I, I feel like, yes, you should stay inside and air condition as much as you can, but there's a strategy to it, and we'll get to that in a second. Shade is absolutely huge. Magic Kingdom has tons of shade. Uh, Animal Kingdom has tons of shade. Uh, Epcot is just out in the open. <laughs> it's, it's a big... Baking kind new, of, uh, new. I don't know what Star Wars world. Is, no, like we don't Alex go to. Edge. We honestly don't yeah. go to Hollywood Studios enough. Yeah. But I don't feel like it's a very shady park. Yeah. Um, I, I, petition to Bob Chapek. I need you to spend some money on installing an awning over the entirety of World Showcase. Yeah. Just a big, big shade, big umbrella yes. right over the top. Uh, if you don't have, if you can't find shade, right? Uh, the next best thing is a hat or an umbrella. Uh, so you can use an umbrella as a parasol. You can use an umbrella to keep, you know, a little portable shade to go with you. Uh, please don't do a humongous beach umbrella or something that's going to hit other people, you know. But a nice little personal umbrella uh, would be great in the Florida in the summer. Not a bad idea to have an umbrella anyway. Uh, or a hat. Uh, Invest in a big floppy hat. Even a baseball cap. We'll provide some shade to your face and we'll make you... And also, it will cool down the top of your head. Uh, so it is... It is nice. Make sure it's a breathable hat. And uh, Yes, I have found that, unfortunately, the hat that I like wearing to the parks makes my head sweat yes. a lot. It's actually kind of uncomfortable to wear out in the heat for an extended period of time. It's because it does not, it's not Because ventilated. it does not breathe. Yep. So I'm going to have to buy a new one. There you go. <laughs> Uh, the next thing is clothing. Uh, watch what you are wearing. Uh, dark colors absorb sun and heat. Yes. So, yeah. Fun fact. I was at Epcot this, today as well, and it didn't hit me until I was walking from the parking lot to the park that I was wearing a black t-shirt. Mm-hmm. Wearing dark colored t-shirts, yeah. 90 plus degree heat. Yeah. You don't want to do that. Uh, and it's not the heat, it's the sun, right? It'll absorb the sun, the heat from the sun. So on a cloudy day, you're, you're fine wearing black clothing. But on a, on a sunny day, you don't want to wear black clothing or darker clothing. You want to lean more towards your lighter colors. You want to go for lighter clothing. So you want to go with cottons. Uh, any of those moisture wicking kind of uh, like swim shirts or athletic shirts that are made out of rayon or something, nylon rayon that that is ultra breathable, you know, like, like they they dry out really fast. Um, I tried wearing one of those at Epcot the other day, and it was fine. I I, I felt fine, but we weren't really walking right. top top speed a lot. We were sitting a lot, so I don't know. I'll have to test it again. Have and, to try and, it the next time we go and, and to under, the parks under on performance a, on, conditions. Right. Yeah, but clothing. Make sure you're not wearing super heavy clothing. You're gonna you're gonna run a marathon around World Showcase. Yeah, possibly. <laughs> uh, Also, uh, you know, shorts, uh, make sure that you're wearing, you know, appropriate shoes and everything. If you have black shoes, they're going to absorb heat just as much as your black uh, shirt. So just lighter colors in the summer, the way to go. Uh, The next thing, which is tying into what you were saying about going inside, the heat of the day, uh, if you're not from Florida, you would think the heat of the day is at noon. That's when the midday, right? Meet midday when the sun is at its highest. That's when it's going to be the hottest in Florida. Actually, the heat of the day in Florida is between two and four p.m. So the hours between two p.m. and four p.m. are the hottest parts of our day. So you want to make sure that you, during that part of the day, that you're not outside. Right. If <laughs> so, you're yeah. if you're not a Disney Resort hotel guest, mm-hmm. go see your shows. Go find any excuse to go shopping. Or a sit-down restaurant. Or a sit, Delay. Yeah. Go, have t- your lunch t- t- Take later. a late lunch. Yeah. And also you'll find more dining reservations if you dine at off-peak times. Yeah. Um, if you are a hotel guest, though, leave the park. Yeah. Leave the park. Go to the pool. Go to your room. Relax. Yeah. Don't, it, don't be out in the sun if you absolutely don't have to. Yeah, from 2 to 4. After about 5 p.m. in the afternoon... Depending on the time of year, uh, it will it will start to cool off a little bit. 
uh, in the summers. It may not start to cool off until seven, but it's certainly not getting hotter at 5 p.m. It's, right. it's, it's on its decline. Not not a steep decline, but on its decline. Um, also, rain showers. We usually get afternoon rain showers, so that also tends to cool off things in the afternoon. Uh, and then number six is water, but not in the drinking fence that we had back at number one, but water in the sense that water will make you cooler. Uh, water pulls heat away from the body. That is what it does. So swimming pools are great to cool you off. You can be in the 90 degree heat outside, jump into a swimming pool. And if there's a breeze, you can get kind of chilly just coming out of the swimming pool it, it, as the water evaporates from you. A, a swimming pool has a massive effect on making you uh, feel cooler, right? Um, but it doesn't have to be a swimming pool. At Epcot, the, the big sun-baked Epcot that there are, there are splash pads around for kids to play in and whatnot. Uh, and it's the same concept there. Getting water on kids it will cool them off. It pulls heat away from the body, and it is absolutely, you know, water, being in the water is going to make you feel cooler. I don't know how, well, we'll talk about that next, but uh, any, anything you want to add about the water, like going into the water? Uh just do it. Yeah. Just, just 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 do it. Take a break. Go to the go to the pool. If you have your if you have the add on to your annual pass, go to the water park. Yeah. Also, just going into the restroom and putting some water on your face uh, before you reapply yeah. your sunscreen. Like just wash you know your face with some cold water and, and just whatever. make sure you don't get sunscreen in your eyes. It burns. Yeah. There are cooling parts of your body, and they are on the underside of your wrists. Um, for those of you watching video, I'm holding up my wrist. Uh, on the back side of your elbow right here, the, the crook of your arm, uh, and on the back of your knees, like so the crook of your leg from the behind. Those are the areas that if you apply cool water there, uh, has a stronger evaporative effect and a cooling effect on your body. I um, didn't know that. Yeah. Uh, so that is something also to do. And, that, and that's the, the, the thought behind those cooling towels that you see is that you're going to use those parts of your body uh, to keep them moist. All right, so now let's talk about the gadgets. You've all seen them. You've all probably looked into getting them at some point in time. Uh, these are the battery-powered fans that hang around your neck uh, in several different styles. There's the spray bottles that have fans on them. There's just plain out spray bottles. There's uh, cooling towels. Cooling towels. Uh, what are the other ultra crazy things that they, they have out there? I know misters are a big thing. Like uh, people will sell misters uh, at like the patio store. Like oh, mister outside will make you feel you know cooler. Uh, they have them at Animal Kingdom. So let's start with the misters. In my opinion, in my non-scientific opinion, Florida is so humid that misting doesn't make you feel any cooler. It just makes you feel wetter. It's like you're uh, just yeah. adding more moisture just, to the already yeah. incredibly moisture saturated air. Like in California, Las Vegas, other places like that where I've run into misters in a very dry atmosphere, they're great. They're wonderful. I mean, it actually feels like air conditioning at times. But in Florida, you you know, the the sweat that's coming out of your body in reaction to the humidity and stuff like that is, you know, that is your body trying to push moisture to your skin to evaporate to cool you down. Um, so you don't need additional moisture out there. You've got moisture in Florida. That's never been a problem in Florida. <laughs> Uh, and it never will be. Yeah. The other gadgets, I'm curious to know, so I would like to get some feedback from you guys, if you would like for us to test some of these devices out. Like yes, I said before. The, the, the fans yeah. and the yeah. things yeah. and the... The crazy fans and the misters and things and the cooling towels and stuff. Like I said, I walk around the neighborhood uh, every day for my uh, for my Fitbit. So I you know go out and put 6,000, 7,000 steps in every day and I... I would be happy, you know, I can try these things out and see how they work. Uh, and I can, I can report back to you, but not if you're not interested because I, I'm really not that interested, but if you're curious for science, I am willing to do it for science. Is willing what I'm willing to, to spend a small amount of money for science. Yeah, for science. Uh, and there you go. That's, those are our seven tips for, uh, of, you know, surviving the heat in Florida. Nothing, nothing crazy, nothing fancy, it's just you may have even heard them before yeah, water shade light clothing hats uh don't go outside between two and four or don't stand outside between two and four uh and you know swimming uh water swimming splashing water on you those kind of things uh will make a huge difference so hopefully if you're coming to florida don't don't be scared <laughs> you, it's, it's it's really it's hot but it, it's a lovely place it's yeah it's lovely here yeah you were just at the World Showcase today. I was. And you survived. I did. So, 
All right. Uh, that was our main topic of the week. Let's get to our news. We're, we're paring down our news section a little bit here because it looks like uh, a lot of people bail at this point in time. Um, so we're just going to kind of pick a couple of news stories that we can talk about as opposed to trying to give you a comprehensive list. Right. Which, Especially yeah. because we've moved the podcast to a biweekly format. Yeah. Um, there's lots of news that happens every two mm-hmm. weeks, and we were not a primarily news show, so yeah. it would take us decades to actually give you all the news that you've probably all, probably already heard anyway. Yeah, from from people who are actual reporters. Yes. Like people that, that know more than we do. Uh, all right, so here's our quick hits for the week, uh, or for the two weeks. Uh, Disney has shared a first look at the menu for the new Boardwalk Deli, previously the Boardwalk Bakery. But they're so good at naming <laughs> They're just, they're so great at naming things, Uh, which is set to open late this summer. The location is inspired by the delis of the Northeast. Like, like, is it going to, are they going to have the, like the coleslaw and stuff on the table? And it's like, are there going to be older ladies stealing silverware and, and sweet and low from the uh, tables? Uh, uh, No, no offense to any older ladies out there. It was just a thing that happened in New York a lot. Uh, With a menu that takes guests on a road trip of classic sweet and savory flavors from New York to the Jersey Shore. Uh, Can I look at this menu? You can. Yeah, let's see. What what are we talking about here? Uh, Sandwiches. Ooh, a Reuben. Is that a Reuben? That is a Reuben. Ooh, I like Reubens. Uh, I wonder if they have a Rachel. I love Rachel. Ooh, is that Salmon? No, this is a veggie crunch muffalata. No, no. Or is that a cannelloni? Can, yes, cannelloni. I almost said cannoli. No, it no, is cannoli. that is cannoli. Can- cannelloni. That's not is pasta. A- <laughs> cannoli? Uh, audio listeners, sorry. Uh, it, it's, it's cakes and cupcakes and, and whatnot. But it looks like, you know, deli food that you would expect from, from a deli. In the from a deli, yes. Yeah, like uh, an Italian sub and uh, a Reuben and whatever this is that's a breakfast sandwich oh i'm never up i'm never up for breakfast so uh yeah are you excited about this we have never been to the boardwalk bakery that's because the boardwalk bakery prior just really didn't have anything to write home about it was just it was like a counter service bakery yeah we've never been there i'm actually kind of excited um we don't get over to the boardwalk all that often and there's some really good restaurants over there so i'll be i'll be interested to, to maybe try that sometime Excellent. Sometime we're at Epcot, we'll just walk out the back gate and go go get some stuff there. Put it on the list. What's the next item? For all of you who have been lamenting the fact that the Walt Disney World Railroad has been down for what feels like forever. Yes. You're in luck. Kind of. The railroad track has been delivered to the Tron Light Cycle Run construction site. And the first group of Magic Kingdom cast members have begun training for the return of the railroad. Although no return date has been stated yet. So I... They've got to lay the track at the Tron site, and then I don't actually know what all else they have to do to get that thing up and running. I have a ambivalent relationship with the Walt Disney World train. I am going to date myself here horribly by saying I remember when Mickey Starland, well, it was Mickey's Birthday Land, which later became Mickey Starland, and they had a song for the train, and that was the coolest thing ever. It's just like uh, going, going, rolling along on the Mickey's Birthday Land Express. Right? It was it was a cool song with like you know kind of Kids of the Kingdom kind of feel to it and everything. It was, it was hokey as hell, but it was cute. Uh, and the last time, and your first time riding the Walt Disney World train, and my last time riding it, um, I they there was no song. It was, oh, if you look over to the left, you'll see a deer. You know, it's like, <laughs> it's I I wasn't always that wild about the Walt Disney World Railroad. But it, we know that a lot of people are. So. Clearly, a lot of people are very, very angry. If I am to take Twitter as a judge, people are very upset that the Walt Disney World Railroad has been closed for as long as it has. They've got places to go, Zach. They got places to go. They're they're waiting for those trains, and they're they're busy people. They got places to go for that Grand Circle tour around Magic Kingdom. That's right. Uh yeah. I I I I don't know. I don't know how this tunnel near 
Tron is going to work. I don't know what's going to... I want a song. If they bring a song back, I'll be very happy. <laughs> like, if they, got a, if they got a train song, I'm all in. I'm a sucker for a song, man. Uh, okay, and then finally, the last news story we want to talk about is Magic Band Plus is finally launching July 27th. Hey, that's two days from that the day is. we're recording. Uh, July 27th at Walt Disney World, Magic Bands Plus finally being rolled out. There are um, There's a lot of different designs, and they just added some more within the last day or so. Yeah. What is your thought? Now, I feel like I, as soon as they announced Magic Band Plus, I erased from my mind any possibility of me buying a Magic Band. So any, you know, when we look at the pin event and there were some Magic Bands for that. And the, the, the Flower, Flower and Garden Festival. Flower, food and Wine Festival. The, all of those, I, I was like, no, I'm not going to buy. All the regular Magic Bands. Yeah, I'm not going to buy a Magic Band because they're they're coming out with a new Magic Band. Uh, so why would I invest in these old ones? Um, I... What are they going for? Thirty. They start at thirty-five. So thirty-five bucks. And we are we as pass holders are eligible for a discount. I don't think they've clarified how much. At do the... we know? Do you have to charge them? Yes, you do have to charge them. But if they run out of charge, they work as a regular Magic Band. They always work as a regular Magic Band. So it's just the regular Magic Band RFID stuff that doesn't require power. And then stacked on top of that, the thing that requires the power is all the LED right. and the, the haptic, lights and the vibrations the and haptic e- e- everything concept. extra that makes it the, the plus, essentially. The plus. Yes. The plus of the Magic Band Plus. Right. You're not going to be able to walk up to the statues and wave your arm and do whatever and have them reply if it's dead. I don't know. I don't know how I feel about this. I feel like they're big. They they look like smartwatches to Yeah. Me. I feel like they're big. And I don't like big things on my wrists, and uh, so I don't really know, especially one that doesn't even tell you the time. <laughs> I constantly, I don't wear a watch. My phone is my watch, yeah. but I'll, at the park, I'll look at my wrist like it's a watch, because I still wear a magic band. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I have a Fitbit, which acts, you know, doubles as a watch, but mainly it's just to track my steps and my pulse and stuff. But it's like, I... I don't know how I feel about these Magic Band Plus. Do you have any feelings about the Magic Band Plus, folks out there? If you do, please let us know. We would we would love to hear what the what the uh, general consensus right. Are is. Are you going to get one yeah. when they launch? Have you pre-ordered one? Yeah. I don't think I'm going to rush out and get one the first time. I'm going to wait and for see, some... And see the, like the, the, yeah. the reports and whatnot. See some other Disney YouTubers get them and put some videos out, and I can make my decision based off of watching them, I think, whether I want them or not. Anyway. There you go. Those are our news quick hits of this uh, time period. Again, we don't have a stinger or music or anything no. like that. Yeah. What do we do? We don't know anything about production elements. <laughs> we, we, we suck at production elements. Uh, anyway, let's get to our heroes and villains of the week, and, and then we'll get out of here. Uh, this is an odd number show. That means we start with our villains. Yes. All right. Uh, do you want to go first? Or you want me to go first? I will go first. Go first. Because when I parked at Epcot today, yes, I was afflicted by the Epcot parking curse. Oh, no. They put me down at the end of the row. It's contagious. Wait, for those of you who don't know, every single time that I go to park at Epcot, even if it looks like I'm going to be near the, the, the walkway, near the, the central pathway, uh, they will stop, open up another row, and send me down to the end of that row to park. I, no matter what, no matter the day, no matter the, the what I'm wearing, even if I try to disguise myself, they will they, put they, me. They know his truck, and now apparently me. they know my car. They put me at the end of the row always. And, but as a uh, as, yeah. as a bit of Schadenfreude, the friend I was with also got shoved down at the end of the row. So at least we got to walk in together. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, especially like we don't usually go until the afternoon and I, right. I'm always kicking myself because there's rows of already parked cars that we're passing to get to the parking attendants. For those of you who don't know, they, they kind of go back and fill back in rows instead of continuing to stack all the way back to the back of the parking lot. So in the midday, they kind of shift up how they do their parking. And I see spots that are like four or five in that I could very easily just go pull and park in. And, you know, I'm far enough away from a cast member that no one's going to do anything. If they're just going to let me park there. And I think, no, no, I'm going to be a good boy. I'm going to follow there to and always, always into the row. Never fails. Uh, my villain of the week is the 
AirPod cases, and I'm putting those in scare quotes, at Disney. Now, Disney, to my knowledge, this is the first time I've seen them, is for the Food and Wine Festival. They are AirPod and AirPod Pro cases is how they're billed. I have AirPod Pros, and the the case that they were offering had Remy on it, and one of them had Figment on it, and, uh, you know, with the food and wine on it. And I was like, oh, that would be great. I would love that uh, to have a, a, you know, because your AirPod or your AirPod Pro, the cases act as the charging cases for them. And so I assumed that this was just a, a new charging case for my AirPod Pros. No, no, it more accurately is a cover for your AirPod and AirPod Pro earbud case. It's a case for your case. Which means that your AirPod, you know, your AirPod Pro case, which is, you know, the size of a matchbook, can now be the size of uh, I don't know, a deck of cards. <laughs> it's just like it adds a lot of bulk to your otherwise very small case, uh, for not a lot of bang to that buck so I was like I was very disappointed in them I should have known that's what they were because they're not expensive they're like $20 right and there's no way they're going to sell me a charging case for for AirPod Pros for 20 bucks but uh but we didn't and now we know and we're sad so no boo Disney boo I this is not what I want I do not want I want a case that's you know it's basically you want an AirPod case with a, a Disney design on it correct maybe maybe I can find them on Etsy or something I don't know, maybe the hand-painted ones or something like that. Schlacked, I don't know. Uh, anyway, what's your hero of the week? So I had to make a couple returns at Epcot today. Yes. More specifically, exchanges. Mm-hmm. Uh, we bought some shirts that we needed to exchange. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, those things can be a bit of a time consumer, especially the way I, I uh, shopped through the My Disney Experience app, so I didn't have a physical receipt. Mm-hmm. Um so you have to pull up your purchase history, get them the QR code, and you know that takes logging in 500 times because Disney just hates me. Um, especially the cast member at the Guardians gift shop because I was exchanging a shirt that you bought. Yeah. So I had to call him and get him to get me the QR code from the My Disney Experience thing because while they can do an exchange without a receipt, they need leadership and it's a big old production. And okay. so I just, I, the, the cast member was very patient and very helpful um, and very understanding. So thank you to both of the cast members who handled my exchanges today. Y'all were great. <laughs> did you give them a cast compliment in the My Disney app? I did not. Like, oh. a, no, I'm, I'm a horrible person. I'm sorry. I'd like to change my villain of the week to be Zach, who did not give the cast members a cast compliment. Uh, finally, my hero of the week is the La Hacienda de San Angel. What he said. Um, we ate there again on Sunday. Uh just a super solid restaurant. It's so good. Uh, the the food there, if you've if you've ever had their asabuco, it's delicious. Uh, the views are great inside there. They have the avocado uh, margarita that you can get over at La Cava del Tequila over inside the Mexican Pavilion. They actually have it there at uh, La Hacienda. Uh, just as good. It's just as delicious. They they, uh, they also yeah. have a margarita flight, mm-hmm. which I finished one and a third of. That's a lot of alcohol, so just be warned. And they, they were relatively strong pours for Disney, yeah. so... Uh, that could be three margaritas. Uh-huh. Yeah, it's three, three, mar- it's three eight-ounce margaritas for $30. Yeah. So, you know, three yeah. for the price of two. Yeah. There you go. All right. Uh, I think that wraps up. That makes a show. Um, like I said, we're going to be streaming live July 30th, Saturday, July 30th, Jen LaForge. We will probably take a edited version of that live streaming show and put it out as our next show. So if you don't get to hear us live streaming, you'll still get to hear Jen LaForge because we'll be putting that out as our normal podcast. Um, and I think that is it. Anything else you want to add? Nope. Then all that is left for us to say, nay, all that is left for us to plead is to please, please, please don't do Disney. Without us. <laughs>